Okay, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a, uh, the detection of a, a field or a force that comes as a result of purely of motion, motion of mass particles. Um, we might call it a kinematic field, as Henry Wallace talked about, or a uh, gravitomagnetic field, or a gravity wave. Uh, at least that's what it appears to be and it confirms a number of these theories. So what I have here is this is just reading the I have two sensors hooked up which are piezoelectric and they're just directly hooked up to the oscilloscope. Piezoelectric discs like this and so they're inside this jar. This is a glass jar, a food jar that's uh, painted on both sides with nickel conductive paint and actually goes by it's called Super Shield. Reduces or eliminates EMA RFI interference because I want to rule out any kind of electromagnetic or RF causes of course um, so that's basically it so it's quite sensitive here if I just touch it if I just gently tap this you see those spikes there so it's very sensitive to uh, mechanical motion so I have one set up that's oriented this way and I have one set up that's oriented that way which I call Z this I call X uh, so, so I have a number of these rotors here, which I made different materials, different composite materials. This is epoxy and copper particles. This is resin and bismuth particles. And I have a few of these bismuth ones. And uh, this, of course, is the the big sucker here. So my first demo is going to be of this one here because it's of course the most pronounced effect. So it's hooked up to a motor here from a dishwasher. But I'm just going to gently turn this by hand and you'll see what happens here on the scope. Notice the uh, peaks that begin to form on this signal. So there's no airflow here, there's no electromagnetism, there's no sound waves, there's no mechanical vibration. So I put it underneath the Z sensor here, you can see, you see how these waveforms get, they develop. What I'm going to do is just power this up slightly and you'll see very strong indications. So right now there's no power going to the motor. And you'll see these very strong waveforms here being detected by the piezoelectric discs. And of course if I spin it up faster, see how they get closer together? More spiky. I don't know if I just stop it, it goes back to zero. I'm going to try this at a further distance here. One thing I've noticed about this is that wobbling is actually important. And when this thing is balanced and it's rotating smoothly, there won't be any signal on here. So it's important to get a, a nice little wobble on it. See, I'll deliberately make it wobbly. And you'll see the huge distortion there. And this is maybe, I don't know, 
20 RPM, something like that. Not very fast. But these tiny particles of bismuth uh, are moving relatively fast. So you might say this is something like Einstein's theory of relativity and how gravity relates to masses in motion. But inside the bismuth, of course, there's a pretty heavy nuclei with, so when this, uh, due to the angular momentum, um, it's going to cause the, the nuclei to align. What I actually want to do is vibrate this thing quickly. See that? I'm just doing it by hand. Just back and forth. And now I'll have a look at another kind of rotor, which is similar, but smaller. So I'm going to spin this up to actually a pretty slow RPM. It's got a little bit of a wobble on there. I want to keep that wobble. It's just running, this motor is just running on about one volt right now. By the way, this is at 10 millivolts peak to peak, and this is a uh, hundred milliseconds per division. And this is the smallest rotor I made, same stuff, resin and bismuth powder. See the distortion there? This is running at 1.3 volts, so it's very slow. If I move it away, it goes back to the noise floor. See the distortion there? And some of you are thinking this is because of electromagnetic noise coming from the motor. Well, let me take this off and I'll just run the motor and the shaft just beside and you'll see I'll turn it right up. 10 volts. Let's turn it fast. There's also some noise from vibration. But it's not registering on here in the other case. So there's no electromagnetic noise coming out of the motor that's affecting the sensors. Oh, let's try the medium sized one here. So you'll see, watch the change on here. This is the Z, by the way, the vertical one. There, see that? there. Oops. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. Just moving it up and down underneath. Can you see that distortion? That's the kinematic field or the gravitational induction field. Get up some more here. Let's get it going real fast. There you go. There's our gravity field right there. I'll suddenly stop it. And that didn't register anything, but oh well. Okay. Let's try some other kinds of rotors here. Let's try lead. Let's see what happens with lead, because lead is very dense. But lead only has um lead 207, I think, is the the isotope, which has the unpaired nuclear spin, and that's only 20% in abundance. So, I believe this effect has to do with, like uh, Henry Wallace talked about in his patent, it has to do with having a an isotope with a, an odd number of protons or neutrons. So there's an unpaired nuclear spin going on there. Because we want to, we want to focus or align those nuclear spins, those that angular momentum in the nucleus of all the atoms. Yeah, not really seeing anything happen with the lead. try what I was doing before. That's never mind that. Never mind that. Yeah, there's not that uh, very visible distortion there like there was with the lead or the uh, bismuth. Copper particles and epoxy. Copper should work too because it's got unpaired nuclear spin. Just like in brass. Now, another little thing to try is this circuit board here with, see it's how it's got all the little solder balls in there for extra, extra mass. And also these little uh, vias in here too make these kind of like how uh, Michael Boyd talks about in his patent, the uh, hard disk and the nano pits um, moving very quickly across the sensor, how that makes a gravitational magnetic field. So you got all these little vias in here that are making these little fields as it moves quickly. Let's see what this does. Also it's 
being rectangular, it's going to make these. We'll see. Let's see what it does. Again, there's no wobble on this. It's just a smooth rotary motion. Never mind that. Never mind that. this this is from my old video it's the uh, brass rotor this has got a little bit of a wobble on it too because it's not perfectly aligned This is all just noise from the motor. These lines here, these spikes. So you can ignore that. See there's more noise here? Look at this. See that? See how the band gets thicker? Then it calms down. 